and welcome to a short video about enlargement in maths. Enlargement. We're going to focus on two things and hopefully by the end of this you'll be familiar with and understand the two concepts of positive scale factors and also centre of enlargement. The centre of enlargement. These are two key phrases on the topic of enlargement which if you understand them both will allow you I think to work with confidence within this topic. Enlargement in maths <laughs> is the making bigger of shapes. Sometimes, actually, uh, you can make them smaller as well with enlargement. It sounds strange, doesn't it? They should put them small in there, but they don't. Enlargement is the making bigger or smaller of shapes. And here are a couple of examples um, using that first phrase, scale factors, scale factors. Now, the top example with the black and blue shapes, we have one rectangle on the left, and it's enlargement on the right. And above it, I've written SF equals 3, because that means the scale factor. SF stands for scale factor. The scale factor in that top example is 3, because the enlargement, the shape on the right, is 3 times bigger or larger than the one on the left. The black original rectangle has a length of 2, as I've written there, and a breadth or height of 1 square. If the enlargement has a scale factor of 3, it means that each of the sides of that shape, whatever shape it might be, will be 3 times longer. So if my horizontal sides in my original are 2 squares long, and I multiply each of those by 3, that means in my new shape, the shape on the right, the horizontal sides will be 6 squares long, because 2 times 3 is 6, right? And the vertical sides, if they are each 1 square long and are enlarged by a scale factor of 3, it will make them 3 times longer, and 1 times 3 is 3, and so we see that the blue shape on the right has horizontal sides that are six long and the vertical sides that are three long. Okay, let's do one ourselves. Underneath that, I've drawn a trapezium. That's a trapezium, isn't it? Because it's got a pair of parallel sides. There they are. So it's a trapezium. Uh, and I've written SF2. Okay, so for scale factor of two. So we want to make each of those sides twice as long as they are already. That one's one square long. That one's three squares long. That one's two squares long. And if we do those three, diagonal side won't be a problem. And, uh, the vertical side on the left was one square, times that by two gives us a length of two. There we go. The bottom horizontal side was three squares long. Scale factor two means we double it, so double three is six, so we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. I hope you won't need to listen in your books, by the way. The top side is two squares long, double that makes four, so one, two, three, four, join them up. And that's right, isn't it? Because, of course, the original diagonal side was one square diagonally across the um, board, and this one's gone one, two squares. So that confirms that we're right in our enlargement. Okay, super duper. So that's scale factors. That's very simple, isn't it? The scale factor is the multiple by which you enlarge each side of your shape. Let's move on and talk about the centre of enlargement. The centre of enlargement. Um, like the universe, all enlargements have a, have a start point. They have a, an origin, a place from which they all begin. Uh, and if we look at these two squares here, um, I hope you can see that the one on the right uh, is an enlargement of the one on the left by a scale factor of three. Um, we can find the centre of enlargement by drawing lines from the correspond between lines through, sorry, lines through the corresponding points on each shape. So if I start from the bottom left-hand corner of the big square and draw a line through the bottom left-hand corner of the small square about there, that'll be my start. Then let's go to the bottom right hand corner of each shape. Let's draw a line through each of those. Bottom right hand corner there, bottom right hand corner there. And those two lines meet, don't they? Top left hand corner. There and there. Hmm. Top right hand corner. Obviously it'd be the same. And what we see is that when we draw lines from each corner of each of our through the corresponding corners of each shape all those lines meet at a certain point, and that point is known as the centre of enlargement. That is the point from which our enlargement begins. I could call it C, the centre of enlargement, or I could call it Fred, it doesn't really matter. So the point is that all enlargements start from a certain point in maths, and that point there, that point C in this question, is my centre of enlargement. And actually, if you look at it, you'll see that each point on the enlargement is three times further away from the centre of enlargement as the original, because the scale factor is three. Look, to get to the bottom left-hand corner of each one, from C, I go down one square and right one square to get to my original. To get to the uh, enlargement bottom left-hand corner, I go down three squares 
and across three squares. So I went down one and across one, and now I go down three and across three. Each point on the enlargement will be three times further away from the centre of the enlargement here, because the scale factor happens to be three. Let's look at some more. Okay, that's so we talked about the two main terms we said we would. Scale factors, which tell you how much bigger uh, the shape gets, and the centre of enlargement, which is the point from which the enlargements begin. Okay, here's another example. We've got a rectangle, and I've given you a point C, which is the centre of enlargement. Now, you can do this drawing lines again, but I'm going to show you on square paper how uh, you don't need to draw lines in order to plot an enlargement once you're given the scale factor and given the centre of enlargement. Here, the scale factor I've given you is 2, which means my enlargement is going to be twice as long, and each point on the enlargement is going to be twice as far away from the centre of the enlargement as the original. So, uh, let's plot each, all four corners of our enlargement. I'm going to start with my top left-hand corner of this rectangle. And I'm going to say to myself, OK, from the centre of enlargement to the top left-hand corner of the rectangle is up one square and right two which means the enlargement will be twice as far away. So it'll be up, two, and right, four. Agreed? So up, two, and one, two, three, four. There will be my top left-hand corner. Let's plot the top right-hand corner. That's up, one, and right, one, two, three squares. So this time I'll go up, two, and double three is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And the bottom left-hand corner, here we go, down one, right two. So I'll go down two and right four. So I'll double each of those. And I get to one, two, three, four there. And the bottom right-hand corner, you should already know where this is going to go, but let's just plot it to be sure. To get to it from the centre of enlargement, the original, down one and across three. So I'll go down two and double three is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there. And lo and behold, if we draw, join those together, we get a rectangle, each of whose corners is twice as far away from the centre of enlargement as the original. If I just redraw the original, it's not terribly clear now, is it? <laughs> if I shade it in, there we go. I'll shade in my enlargement. And look at the, look at the sides. This one's too long by one wide. And the enlargement is four squares long by two wide. Each side is twice as long as the original. Scale factor was two. It's supposed to be that long. We have successfully done it. I could even, if I wanted to, to check I've done it correctly, draw my lines, as in the previous example, to see and to check that they all meet at the centre of enlargement. And look, the bottom left and the top left corners do that. And these ones will as well, won't they? Because I think it's pretty, pretty obvious that we've got this right. Bottom right to bottom right. And yes, bingo. There we go. That's it. I'm going to stop there because I don't want to go on too long. Plotting enlargements, you need to know about scale factors. You need to understand about centre of enlargement. Sometimes questions like this will be given to you on coordinate grids, so you need to be able to plot coordinates as well, but I know you can already do that along the corridor and up the stairs. There we go. hope that helps.